All right, everyone. So it's time to address our our oiling system. Uh, there's two choices with these sea dews. You can either use the original designed oil pump oil injection system, which is a this is the little oil pump here, and it's it's a variable rate oil pump so that when you're when your your throttle's moving, you're also opening up the cam on this oil pump, which lets more oil through. So lower RPMs, less oil, higher RPMs, more oil. And that was designed by the engineers to deliver the, the best possible fuel to oil mixture. It's a two stroke. So the oil has to mix with the gas. Some people are afraid of these things. They, they're afraid they'll fail. So they pre-mix. Um, the fact of the matter is they do not fail on sea dews. They never fail. And it's just because they last. So the people that take them off and discard them are either doing it uh, because they're they're misinformed, or a lot of a lot of people do it, you know, because they're it's a racing application, and you know they're fine with pre mixing, or they they just really made a personal decision. I, I just want to pre mix and nothing else. So both of those are fine. Uh, I'm not going to criticize anybody's decision here. For me personally. Um, I like the oil injection system. I think it's pretty pretty reliable. Um, it's worked on my skis. I haven't had any problems with it. And so this, this ski, actually, the engine uh, had a block-off plate. And so I'm kind of doing a delete, undelete on this. So I have sourced a new oil pump that we're going to test. Other thing I got here was a oil tank. Uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. This is a two-piece oil tank, which is the most common one. It's also the most problematic because this seam is known to crack and break open. They make a solid tank, which is way better, but it's $100 more, and I just couldn't justify the spend on this project. So I've made a calculated risk, and I've gotten this one. I'm going to give it a go, and... Uh, you know, hopefully it'll all be good, but this looks like it's in pretty good shape to me. Actually, um, there's a crack here. I didn't notice this until I pulled this grommet out, and I'm not sure if I did it or if it came that way, but I'm just going to assume I did it, but I'm going to have to fix that crack, and that may actually be a source of a leak. More on that later. Uh, but then we've got our, got our injection line. We've got our oil fill cable and what we're going to do is we are going to take this pump and we're going to put it in the vise holding the camera so I can't do all this at once and then I have a little makeshift oil reservoir here that I'm going to put up here kind of emulating because it's gravity fed. Uh, emulating what it would look like to feed the oil down to the pump. And then we're going to take a ordinary cordless drill. I've made a little special plastic uh, thing on the end of this where I can stick on the front of this pump here. And you rotate it backwards, not forward. You rotate it counterclockwise. It's actually going to be like this. And if it's working it's going to pump oil out of these top two nipples. So that's how we'll know that it's working. So we're going to test the pump before we use the pump. Okay, so we've got all this set up. I've got the pump very, very loosely in my vise here. It's not on the surface where it mounts to the pump, but trust me, it's safe on there. Loosened up the bleed screw. We're going to pour two-stroke oil in the top here and I come down the tube here um, we have to undo this bleed screw to prime the pump and then once it gets down to the pump <clears throat> then we're going to take our drill in reverse and try to get some oil injection through the lines As you can see, we've got oil pouring through there, but we got a little bit of air right here. Okay, so that's because 
<clears throat> it's trying to come through. Actually, it went through and connected. Bubble came up, but I'm going to go ahead and bleed it out a little bit anyway. This is going to be a little bit of a mess here. You can see it dripping down here. Tighten this back up. It's kind of what you would do on the ski. A little bit of a dress rehearsal. This does not have to be super tight. Snug it so it won't leak. We're going to find out if it's going to leak. Probably should put something down there to catch that oil made a mess. Okay, and now make sure we're going to run in reverse. Make sure I can open this cam up too. There's a cam here, and you got to rotate it a little bit to where it lines up, and then you rotate it where it opens all the way up. In fact, I need to look back here and see where those marks are. There's marks here that you have to line up and then you push it over. Watch that. Working okay. Okay, this is what it looks like with the pump on the engine. Still got oil in the lines. Those are connected to their injectors inside there. And what I did is, just to be sure, is I went ahead and did a second test, and I ran that pump until I saw oil coming out of those injectors and measured how much oil was coming out. And this is what that looks like. All right, so last thing we're doing is just checking to make sure our cinder unit works. Um, I'm gonna cap off the big tube there. That's actually a return from a rotary gear. The ski doesn't have that, so just block that off, but I will put the uh, vent valve back on because that's important. And then this works sort of like the gas tank. I've got it connected up to my own meter there. And with it all the way up, it should be almost no ohms. And you can see it's just 0.5. And then get it about halfway in there. It's about 12 and then all the way down <clears throat> more resistance. So that tells me that the, the sender is working. All right, so we have it all done now. It's kind of what it looks like, a little rubber boot, uh, rubber cap on the top of that with a zip tie to hold it down and then uh, replace the line there. That's just fuel line, but it's the same size, and that'll be fine. I didn't have enough Etiker clamps, or I would have used Etiker clamps for those, but zip ties are perfectly fine for this whole thing. Make sure you get that one-way valve in the right way. You want it to be able to suck air in but not blow out, and that's because when the oil is descending in the tank, um, it creates a little bit of vacuum, so you want to be able to do that. So that's it for all of that, and that will complete our oiling system. Everything's tested and ready to go and put back together. So uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another episode.